Hello ladies and gentlemen, this mini review was written by the lovely Katie Pajama, so thanks to her for writing this. These are her words, not mine, let's see what she thinks. In the midst of the rising number of visual novels that seem to be coming out in 2024, there needs to be something that you can do to make a game stand out amongst all the others. What better way to do this than to give it a long, ridiculous name that will catch people's eye and intrigue them, not to mention be attached to a popular light novel, manga and anime series that's been around since 2013. Konosuba, God's blessing on this wonderful world, love for these clothes of desire, is a recently released visual novel on the Switch to Western audiences for the first time on February 8th. Featuring and starring characters from the series, the game is presented in both a visual novel and material gathering slash time management side gameplay with a multitude of fan service CGs and all the goodness a Konosuba fan could ever want. It actually serves as a sequel to a previously only released in Japan called Judgment on This Greedy Game, but luckily you don't need to have played that one to appreciate this as the stories are separate. Released in the West by P-Cube, one of my personal favourite publishers for these kind of VNs, and developed by Majors, it's time to find out if this one is worth a day one buy and adding to your visual novel collection. Konosuba centres around Kazuma Sato and his harem of main companions, Aqua, goddess of water, Megumin, the strange sorcerer, and Darkness, aka La Latina, although she hates that name, a bold crusader that is a glutton for humiliation. There's also a variety of other female characters that play a role in the game and make an appearance in not only the story, but also in many of the fan services CGs. So a little bit of something for everyone is featured. Taking place after the second season of the anime, the story focuses on the group finding a black slab that upon closer inspection appears to provide them with the magical ability to produce clothing that induces different feelings and effects on the wearer. Although it does come at a cost of a curse which they didn't initially understand or fully realise. The group are more than happy to attempt to utilise this stone and find out what it can do. It turns out, however, that this stone was stolen from a local noble and he would really like it back. But if they can produce him the clothes he wants, he decides he won't necessarily have to press charges on them or put them to death, maybe. The gameplay is sprinkled with mainly visual novel segments, followed by a small schedule slash time management portion where each character can be assigned to a particular task that allows them to gather certain materials based on what the task is. A lot of careful planning and strategy is involved as those materials are needed to satisfy different clothing recipes that are thus required to fulfill the noble's request. In addition to making this clothing that the noble wants, each scheduling session also requires focus on a second required item of clothing that assists in uncursing one of your party. It turns out that the curse of using the black slab involves taking one's greatest desires and flipping them completely around, changing both the personality and desires of the one cursed. You eventually will also unlock clothing recipes for other non-required clothing sets that, when all the materials are gathered, you can use to unlock special CGs that very much play into the fan service side of the game. All in all, the mechanics are simple, fun, and broken up with visual novel segments that display both slice of life situations and expand on the story. The game satisfies that itch of non-taxing VN. The story is simple, but just engaging enough to keep me invested. It can be called shallow and not incredibly well put together, but based on the premise of the game, it wasn't ever portrayed to be a heavy, deep experience, so it fulfills exactly what it sets out to do. The mechanic of material gathering with light story moments and relationship building mix together very well and add to the growing number of VNs that add in an additional layer of gameplay as opposed to nothing but story. I feel like if I was a Konosuba fan, I would have loved this to its core, with all that it provides in the way of character focus, since it has a root for every heroine, seven in total. It's a game that's made for fans and for those that love the series, and for all those that it applies to, you will find a lot to love with this game with its main fan service aim. As someone that's unfortunately never watched or read anything from the series, however, it felt very short, around 18 hours to complete all routes, and left me wanting more from it. 
at the end, it did push me to want to engage with the characters and the world. So I will say it is now on my watch list at the very least. And I can't wait to check it out and return to this game in the future when I explore the world a little bit more. In summary, Konosuba, God's blessing on this wonderful world, Love for These Clothes of Desire is a perfectly okay game. While not winning any awards for best visual novel ever made, it is clearly aimed towards the hardcore fans. Konosuba is the perfect experience for those that love the IP, the characters and all that sweet, delicious fan service. I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Now this is available digitally, of course, but also physically as well. If you want to purchase that, please check the links in the description that help support this channel ever so much. And also, thank you to Katie Pajamas for providing this mini review of Konosuba. Have a good day.